Good afternoon. I'm Jeff Gillian, a nephrologist from Denver and a member of ACMO. And I'm here today with a good friend of mine, Dr. Adam Weinstein. And we're going to spend a little bit of time today talking about the infrastructure of a successful PD unit. Among many other responsibilities, Adam serves as a medical director of a PD outreach unit. Adam, do me a favor and, and describe to me that term. What exactly is a PD outreach unit? So thanks, Jeff. Uh, a PD outreach unit is a dialysis unit that offers only home modality training. Um, in the area where my unit is located, it can't support a full hemodialysis unit, yet there's patients that are in need of uh, treatment for their end-stage renal disease. As a result, we built a unit dedicated to educating and helping people through the various uh, treatment options that come with peritoneal dialysis. And how would you describe the infrastructure that's necessary to help practices like yours, or really any size practices, whether uh, rural or not, achieve success with uh, a peritoneal dialysis facility? Yeah, so the way I see peritoneal dialysis being most successfully executed is a, a connection of three or four different entities all working in concert. The first is to have the necessary practice leadership guiding the philosophy of the practice. That is saying, we as a practice are interested in home modalities. We are as a, as a practice are interested in delivering uh, the, the widest range of options for patients. What comes down from there is each physician in the practice being a leader in their clinical delivery. That is, as they're guiding patients who are progressing to end-stage renal disease, really finding ways to educate them appropriately about home modalities and ensuring that a patient has been adequately informed as to the various choices they have in front of them. The next piece comes from usually the dialysis facility teaching or someone else in the community who takes on the role of a dialysis teaching nurse. And this is where the patient then meets with that nurse to learn about different modalities because not everybody's going to be right for PD or hemo or any one modality. And so hearing a similar or same set of ideas from that nurse about the options is critical in the patient getting the full rounded experience. And then the last piece that's so critical is having a relationship with surgeons, surgeons who are interested in placing PD catheters and who understand the importance of home therapies. So I want to go back just a minute to the point that you made about education. I personally think that, that education, or at least the responsibility of education, falls to, to really all of us in the community. And so I'm wondering how does this education really tie together, and are there steps that practices can use to work with other members of the community, members of the care team? Uh, are there things that, that leaders can do within their own practice to help truly make sure that the team is fully aligned and really in sync in terms of, uh, in terms of patient education. Absolutely, and, and you know, I see this really as, as an issue of understanding and synchronizing on operational definitions. That is, as someone is progressing down the path toward end-stage renal disease, knowing the thresholds at which various activities have to take place to be successful at the end of that process is critical. And so from an education standpoint, it's making sure that as a practice and as a community, you're referring to uh, renal function in the same fashion, whether it's you know the MDRDGFR or creatinine clearance or what have you, but starting just by describing things with similar to vocabulary so that when patients show up at any of these places, they're hearing the same story as to what their kidney function is doing. The second piece is making sure that everyone understands those timelines and the criticality of getting people through the process at various points in that timeline. So that when you call the nurse and say a patient has shown up and their GFR is 22 and I'm concerned because it's rapidly declined in the last few months, they know that that patient probably needs to be educated in a more priority fashion as compared to someone who perhaps has less aggressive loss of renal function. I think that makes uh, perfect sense. I, I myself have always thought about education as being really uh, a, a stepwise fashion. You need to give uh, the patient and the family member the, the, the definitions and, and really the vocabulary that they need. And then they also need a hands-on approach to be able to see what the equipment really is. And then time with you uh, or myself as the, as the physician to help guide them and really bounce ideas back and forth and, and get their misconceptions uh, really identified. So I appreciate your, your thoughts on that. So let's now skip forward a little bit in terms of uh, you've educated patients, patients want to go on to peritoneal dialysis or onto a, a home dialysis modality. What are really the challenges that you see that, that physicians and practice leaders could anticipate in building out well within their own infrastructure in their own office to ensure PD uh, success? And, and really, I guess, what are the ways that, that you think can help address some of these challenges? Yeah, that's a great question because this is really the, the art of 
building a good PD program. The, the, the hardest part and the most critical part in my mind is the relationships between all these actors. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one thing to say that as a practice leader or as a physician in a practice, we're going to align. That's relatively easy within a practice meeting and say, hey, we want to achieve some goal, whether it's a uh, number of PD patients as a percent of our total end-stage renal disease patients or whatever. But it's another thing altogether when you're starting to work with different entities, such as dialysis units and the nurses who work in those dialysis units who might embark on that or who might provide this education. The other portion that becomes critical is a relationship with the surgeons and making sure that the surgeons you work with understand why you're doing what you're doing and why you're referring these patients to them and how important it is that they are an active participant in the process of both education and doing the best they can to get it right the first time with regards to PD catheter placement. The, the challenges come in maintaining those relationships, especially in healthcare environments where there's maybe one or two people providing a service and one of them leaves or one of them retires. And then, of course, dealing with the complications that arise. How do you get patients that are now on peritoneal dialysis in the form of, or they have the catheter in place, and now it needs a revision. How do you rapidly get them through a system that might be constrained by OR time or surgeon availability? And so thinking through those processes and treating them each, treating each patient like a project and managing it like a project becomes really the goal of how do you manage through the issues that arise. Ultimately, in, in some practices, you might have uh, a, a nurse coordinator or someone who takes the responsibility. In other areas, it might be someone from the dialysis facility or perhaps even within the hospital systems, depending on the structure and the various actors involved. Either way, it, it comes down to identifying and anticipating these problems and figuring out how you can work around them as you know they might happen. Great, Adam. Thank you so much for your insight today. Thank you, Jeff. Good talking to you. Absolutely. Thank you all for joining us today.